you mean. <laughs> In a hall. How you doing today, Tina? I'm wonderful. How are you? How was your first con? You know what? I went, I oh, did one already. I did a pony con yeah. in Brooklyn, and it was freezing cold. It was literally the coldest day of my life. Uh, it was probably like negative 20 degrees, and the venue had no heating. <laughs> and, uh, and it was cold, but I loved being there. I actually got to sing that time, so I sang, um, thank you! I sang The Magic Inside, and then I led everybody in a, in a um, Equestria, kind of, I guess it would be like the, the, national, the, anthem. the national Anthem, yes. the Equestria. The anthem. Yeah, and, uh, and that was super fun, I loved it. Then a football game broke out. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, let's get started real quick. Um, I want to know exactly when My Little Pony came into your life. When you were a little girl, what age, who, what, what did you find it? Well, My Little Pony was the original My Little Pony, which is super dark. Uh, but oh, a lot of 80s cartoons were, I mean, pretty dark. I See now, it was a little before my time. Um, my sister watched it. And I watched a little bit of it, but uh, I was more interested in the Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. <laughs> yeah, oh, totally. Um, and uh, so, uh, so, so I remembered My Little Pony. I had ponies. I, of course, I had ponies when I was a kid. I played with My Little Ponies and Care Bears and things like that. And uh, and then, as an adult, um, I was in a rock band, okay, so this is very odd. So I was in this hard rock band called Deafening. And, um, yeah. And, uh, and um, I was in a Broadway show called Kinky Boots. And, yeah, and I had just changed my name from my original name, my, my original name, my real name, <laughs> which is Selena Consuela Gabriela Carvajal. And um, I decided that my band name, which was just a shortening of my real name, Carvajal, I was shortening to Lena Hall. I figured that would probably be a better idea to use that name professionally than my very long and Spanish name. And so I changed my name, and um, and then shortly after, I was hanging out at home, slightly depressed, uh, and uh, I was searching through Netflix, and I was like, "What's this?" And it was very colorful, you know, the, the poster of. Um, Pony Friendship is Magic, and I was like, what is this? I feel like I want to watch some cartoons, because I was feeling really kind of, you know, super down. And uh, and I started watching it, season one, episode one, and I was like, all right, I'll just watch one, one episode and see what happens. And like, literally, yeah, literally couldn't stop watching. I was like, what is this? This is so cool. Like. I loved the music, first of all. Like that was that was the thing that really hooked me into the show was the music. Daniel Ingram re writes really cool music that had a lot of like musical theater references that I knew. Um, and I was like, that's like a Sondheim song. That's like an Angelique Weber song. Like all his references were so obvious to me, and I loved it so much. And so um, so I couldn't stop watching it. I was like, oh, I'll do another episode, okay? And then I'll do another episode. And then of course I had to leave for work. And, um, and, uh, and so I went, and then I returned home and continued watching it. So I basically binge watched three, yeah, there were only three seasons online, uh, on Netflix, and I binge watched all three seasons. And then I kept going back and watching my favorite ones. Uh, one of my favorite ones, I don't know what season it's in, but it's, um, uh, uh, oh my, uh, it's the one with stitch by stitch, but uh, that, that one, the, the, yes, the art of the dress. It sounds like a Sondheim song, which is like, da, 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 putting it together, you know, it's like, so I, I kept watching, I love that, and, um, I got, I got one for you. Yeah. Did, you. did you catch the false cadence? What? Yeah. No. During, during the wedding, when Twilight sings about her brother, at the end, she has a false cadence at the end of the song. Really? Yes. No. Go back. Okay, I gotta watch that. Go back and watch it. So. <laughs> yeah, he stuck, the, he stuck that in there thinking nobody would catch it. Sure enough, some kid uh -huh. who was at a music college said, wait a minute. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love that. Yeah. Um, so, so I, you know, super in the, the show and being 
a grown woman in a Broadway show. Um, I was like telling everybody about My Little Pony. Um, I was telling Annalie Ashford, who's like my dressing room. We, we were on the same floor and our dressing rooms were next to each other, so we always talked. And I was like, I'm watching this show, it's awesome. You have to check it out. Go My Little Pony. She's like, you're crazy. And, <laughs> and I was like, no, I love it. It's just making me so happy. And then, uh, and then I auditioned for Hedwig and the Angry Inch, in which I booked, and so I was in um, rehearsals for that, and uh, season four was airing, so I was watching season four. Um, yeah, season four. And, um, and by the time, so I was, then I was nominated for a Tony Award, which was a total out of the blue experience. And, um, cool. <laughs> I love it. it, always gets applause. I get, it's cool. Uh, <laughs> and um, and I was heavily obsessed with season four, you know, waiting for like, waiting for the finale to air, you know, just waiting for it to air. And um, the season finale was airing, I actually just told this story, it's very funny. Uh, season finale was airing while I was doing all these interviews um, for the Tonys. And uh, usually they would ask me like, what's going on? Like, what's your obsession? I'd be like, oh my God, I'm watching season four. <laughs> my little pony French with magic. And they'd be like, what's that? I'm like, let me tell you about it. <laughs> and, uh, and then, and then um, season four, okay, so the two-parter finale had aired and I was like, I was like, oh my God, there were so many rainbow explosions and like, it was just like so epic. And I was like, you can't go any from, like how do they go somewhere from here? This is just so incredible. Like and colorful and wonderful and, and here we are um, at season eight. Yeah, right. And uh, and and so I was doing it. And like the day after I watched it, I was doing an interview for and a photo shoot for Vanity Fair. <laughs> and I was talking to the woman, and this is before like the formal interview. And I was like, oh, she's like, so you know what what's been going on? And I'm like, all I can think about is like season four finale of My Little Pony Adventures of Magic. She's like, what's that? And I was like, let me tell you about it. And so I told her. All <laughs> about My Little Pony and I told her about the season finale and how friends came together and they made this epic rainbow that destroyed someone and it was like so cool and amazing and like they saved the world with their friendship like how awesome and um, <laughs> and and then we started the interview and um, and did a photo shoot and meanwhile my publicist is like stop talking about My Little Pony you've got to stop I was like, but I love, you know, but it's like something that's going on currently and it's very important to me. And well, she's it's like, a, it's just. It's a great thing that you didn't stop talking about <laughs> it because during your Tony acceptance speech, what did you say? I said, friendship is magic at the end. Yes. Yeah. Such a shout out to the show. So that's so, yeah, that well, on VHXD, right? Yeah, yeah. So, so well, after my Vanity Fair interview, um, I read the article and she talks all about season four of My Little Boy. <laughs> She was like, she was talking about the season finale of My Little Pony, and to, like, she talked about the rainbows and stuff, which is so funny. So that appeared in Vanity Fair, and then my publicist was like, don't mention My Little Pony. Don't. Okay. If you win, just don't mention it. I was like, but, she's like, just don't mention it. It's like, okay. Um, and so in my head, I was like, well, it's really important in my life right now. How can I just give a shout out in like a super sly way that no one will know about? You know, the only people who will know are the people who like the show. And, uh, and so uh, it was a total last minute decision. Um, I didn't think I was gonna win. So um, I had sort of written a speech, but not really. And it was on, if you watch the speech, I had two pieces of paper that I had meant to actually formally write out. Uh, but because of the craziness of that day, I never was able to sit down and write it out nicely. So I took these two pieces of paper out of my dress top like on stage in front of national uh, television, uh, in front of millions of people, and I'm like reading my speech, and like last minute I was like, you know what, I'm just gonna do it. And so I said, friendship is magic, and I went off stage. Um, and then, of course, people were like, wait, was that a pony reference? Like, wait, I, did I hear it right? Like, was, did she just say that out of the blue, or was she referencing My Little Pony, you know? And so there was this whole like forum started like people were asking the question like was it a shout out to the show or is she just crazy like what like you know what uh, what you know what did it mean and um, and I was like I confirmed of course that it was a My Little Pony reference because I love the show and it taught me a lot about 
um, things that I needed reminding of, which is something that we forget about how important friends are in your life. And it was something that I really needed to hear because I was a very kind of, I was very alone or not, I had a relationship, but it was just me and that person. And I wasn't reaching out to friends when I needed them. And like, I didn't have a very good network of people in my life. And it was kind of the show that was reminding me to reach out to these people in my life and reconnect and how important it is to have friends in your life. And, uh, and so that's why the show was really important to me. And, uh, and anyway, so I confirmed and then Hasbro reached out and they sent me this giant swag box of stuff, <laughs> tons of stuff. I was like, oh my God. And uh, why didn't I say, Porsche is awesome, or <laughs> no, I want a Porsche. No, but the swag box was awesome. And uh, and then they reached out and they were like, hey, so we're thinking about writing you an episode and uh, making you your own character on the show. And I was like, what? Like, that's like every pony's dream is to be made into an actual pony on the show and get to voice their own character. So. My, like, I had, like, a, my boyfriend at the time was, like, a graphic designer, and for my 30th birthday, he threw me a surprise party, and on it was, like, my, uh, pony, like, the one that he designed for me, the, mm -hmm. what are they called? Uh, Kitty Mark? No, no. Uh, the, the OC, the origin, original yeah. character. Yeah, he, he made me an original character, and it was, like, happy birthday, you know, for my birthday. That's how much I love the show. So, you know, now, I was, like, well... Now I get a real original character. <laughs> I get an actual pony. And they, they sent me the script and I was like, wow, this is so cool. And then they sent me the music and I was like, wow, the music was written with such love. And the script was written with such love. And I had no idea that it was the last script that she wrote yeah. for the show. So I didn't know that this was a big, such a big uh, deal. And, uh, and when they sent me the pony character, they were like, all right, so we were looking at photos of you on the red carpet and just to get ideas of how we wanted your pony to look, you know, colors and stuff like that. So then, then they sent me the pony and they were like, you can have any kind of, you know, you can make the pony look any way you want, really. This is just a suggestion and we're up to anything that you want. And they sent it to me and I was just like, I love it. I don't know. Like, why else? Why would I change like what they originally had from in my mind? You know, at the time I was wearing like, um, colors in my hair and so they that's why she has curly hair with like streaks of color in it um is because of these red carpet photos that they found with me with like this like kind of greenish blue purple hair um streaked in my hair and like, so i thought that was super cool and then i they showed me my cutie mark of course i freaked out and uh, it was just a really interesting experience to see someone's take um and turning me into like a character a pony and then getting to like voice, I mean, it's just a dream for me, because I've always wanted to do voiceover work, and this was like a total dream. Let, let's talk about your voiceover work in that episode. It's like, okay, so you've got your script, and we know you can sing, so that's like, eh, right? Yeah. So you're about to go in there, and it's like, did you listen to any other voice actors? Uh, did you base it on another character, maybe listen to some Lady Gaga doing interviews or something to come up with her, or is she just you? She's just me. They were like, yeah. They were like, they were like, hey, we just want you to be yourself. I was like, can you just make her pretty grounded? I was like, uh, yeah, okay. And I was, I was a little disappointed because, you know, I was like, well, maybe she could be like, like super posh or something. I don't know. Like, you know, just like some kind of a different voice than mine. Well, but they, they, they wanted me to be me. They wanted it to represent me as a person as much as possible. And they loved my voice. And they they loved didn't my give you Huh? They'd give you the Hoosies voice. It's like, Hoosies! That was me, yeah. yeah. Well, that's, because that's what I would do. <laughs> yeah. They'd be like, well, what would you do if you saw someone you were like, ah? And I was like, I'd go, Hoosies! Like, <laughs> and they're like, perfect. And I got to, I got to play, like, I got to do screaming and, like, um, a bunch of background work, too, for the same episode. So, like, anytime there was, like, a crowd murmur or something, I'm, like, back there being like, yeah, the pony, yeah! Like, <laughs> through a lot of these things, so I have to go, where am I now? <laughs> um, so, doo -doo 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 -doo. okay, so, you're sitting at home, and you, 
live streamed you watching the episode, which was amazing, by the way. Yeah. Anybody else watch that? I watched it. It was great. It was great watching you. So when you saw, of course, you did the thing, you saw the, the, the 2D stills. When you saw Countess Coloratura come out of that egg thing, okay, what's popping in your mind at that very second? I mean, it's just such a cool moment. I, it's just such a cool thing. The thing that really blew me away was hearing my voice for the first time um, on an animated thing. Because that really, that's the thing that really blows you away. Because you can see something animated and it'll walk and do its thing. But once it speaks and it's like, that's my voice so clearly, that's me. You know, um, and we had recorded that like a year before. Cause it takes a long time, obviously, for um, animation to happen. And so it had been a year since I had recorded those. And, uh, and so to just remember the recording process, I actually did it in a studio in New York and I was pumped into Vancouver with everybody. So I never actually got to meet any of the other voice ponies face to face until later. Um, and, uh, and now I'm gonna hang out with everyone because um, I'm filming a TV show in Vancouver and like, they're gonna be my friends. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> But I did get to meet the director and, and the composer that came out and um, and, and the writers. Yes. So um, uh, it was just it was it was a bit it was strange to be like that's my voice and that's the animation to my voice. And how cool is that? Um, and then it just made me really want to do more voiceover work. And then it made me want to be in another episode. And I still haven't heard from them. It's, it's, <laughs> it's addicting, isn't it? Um, it is. The, like, oh, so during the recording of the music, okay? Is there anything that happened during the recording of those two songs between you and Daniel that you can let out that a story of, of recording those things, something going wrong, something... Well, the something first thing. time we recorded everything, I had bronchitis. I was getting bronchitis a lot. And at that time, I was super unhealthy. Um, I was doing tons of interviews and I was doing double duty, so I was doing the Hedwig shows, eight shows, a, or seven shows a week, and then at night, late at night, I would do shows with my band. Wow. So I was like really pushing myself to the edge. I was going out a lot, and I was getting sick a lot. So I had bronchitis the first time we actually recorded those songs, and uh, they were like, um, they're they're hard songs. I mean, the the the, the Gaga song is not that hard. That was a really fun one to do because I got to be really you know diva y. But uh, the other one, the magic inside is a really, it's actually a vocally hard song uh, to sing. And, uh, and so, and what's interesting is he wrote it for my vocal range and things that he saw online. And I was like, wow, whew, like, what am I doing to myself? So, um, so I recorded the songs and then a few months later, I think six months later, they were like, we're gonna record the songs again because you're healthy, and I was like, yes, please. <laughs> so we recorded the songs again. So if we hadn't have recorded the songs, I would have sound, sounded rougher, probably, a lot more gruff, because I did have bronchitis, but we got to record the songs again, and I was really grateful. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I love that they redid it, because the magic inside, the tone is amazing. I love that song. It, I, yeah. Speaking of singing, <laughs> How many of you people out there are downloading her Obsessed series? Oh, oh come on, know. guys. You have to... Do, okay, she, go to lenahall.com right now and start downloading her Obsessed series. Yeah, you go to Spotify. It's Spotify. all on Spotify. Yeah, because... I'm releasing an EP a month of an artist that I'm obsessed with every um, uh, for, for the month, basically. So I started... I did, I did a Hedwig album because everybody wanted to hear me record those songs. So I did Hedwig Obsessed, and then I did... Uh, Elton John and Peter Gabriel Jack and White. Jack White, The Cranberries, Radiohead, Pink, and then the next one coming out is Bowie. And oh, Bowie. finally! Yeah. So, so it's all year long. It's a year long project, um, and there's videos that go with it that are also on YouTube, so you can actually watch me in the recording process. So you can see kind of how, like, you you get to see the the live process of recording a song. It's a beautiful red jacket, by the way. Yeah, oh, that jacket's cool, yeah, right? A friend of mine, uh, Milan Breton, who's a, who's a designer, I was like, hey, man, do you have, like, 400 outfits that I could wear for this thing? Because I was going to change for every song, and then I was like, maybe I'll just change for every artist. I need 12 outfits. And he just 
sent me 12 of the coolest things. So every artist would change outfits for the videos, and, um, and I really love the series. It's just kind of like a walkthrough of, 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 some of some of my favorite music. It's just like the tip of the iceberg. I could do the Zest series for years, yeah. years, years. Speaking of Bowie, a line from uh, one of the songs is, showed me the world, but they were wrong. Oh. And if you actually change the word from show to sold, sold oh, me yeah. the world. Yeah. I, guess, I, I think that was a Bowie something. shout out by uh, Daniel. You think, you so? think so? I think so. I don't know. Yeah. I, 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 actually, I actually asked him at uh, the Canadian con once. He sort of winked and smiled at me. He's like, ah, uh, I gotcha. I gotcha. <laughs> yeah, I'm excited to go to Vancouver. I'm going to hang out with Daniel. And I was like, let's make some music together. Let's just do this. Let's talk about your new movie, Bax. Oh, yeah. Bax the movie, because that's like 94% Rotten Tomatoes. Yeah, it's yeah. It's awesome. It's a great uh, great film. I don't, not a lot of people have seen it. It's an independent feature, and we won the LA Film Festival, and we did tons of um, festivals, and uh, like we're the featured film. It's my first lead role in a feature film, and it was freaky for me, but... It worked out really well, and it's an LGBT film, and uh, Mina Suvari's in it, Christine Lottie's in it, um, Dan Fogler's in it, it's a great cast, it's very funny, and there's a soundtrack, the music is really beautiful, it's, it's different from what I usually do, it's much more like folky, folk rock, I guess. 70 singer-songwriter. Yeah, singer-songwriter-y, and it's, it's beautifully done. I, I really love the film, I think it was, um, Underrated, but then well rated by Rotten Tomato people. Yeah. So, <laughs> so yeah, if you can yeah. check it out, it's on Amazon Prime. Yeah, Amazon Prime, check that out. It's a really good movie. Um, plus, you get to sing a lot. I do sing a lot. Yes. It's a musical. It's a musical. It would be like it's like once. You know, it's like that. Um, next question. This is we're gonna get into something here. Uh, in the episode of Main Attraction, you and Applejack have a bit of a falling out. <laughs> Um, so now that you've been so successful over the last 10 years, uh -huh. have you had sort of that thing with a friend of yours where you have a falling out and you come back together? Is it, has something like that happened since you've started to get more popular? Um, you know, I, not really, I, because I didn't have any friends. <laughs> oh, well, you have tons of friends now. <laughs> and I, <laughs> Is that like I had, you know, I had friends here and there, but I've never really connected very deeply with people. It's 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 many things that many therapists, many things, um, and you know that was one of the reasons why I liked the show was because it got me to reach out and actually reconnect with certain people. So I'm not I'm not co uh, combative at all. Like I'm I'm pretty very easygoing. Uh, so it's very difficult to lose me as a friend or to have a falling out with me. I mean, you'd have to do something horrendously bad. Like, I mean, murder. Like, bad. scratch a triumph? No, actually, I, no. That, I would be like, mm, it, my, my triumph is my motorcycle. Yes. Like, yeah, that would suck, but I can fix it and, you know, things happen. Even if you did it purposely, I'd be like, it's not like, I wouldn't trust you around my motorcycle anymore, but um, but I'd have to understand the reason why you did that. Because there's always, you know, there's two sides to every story, you know, and, and the reason why someone may lash out may surprise you. You know, you just have to ask the questions and be willing to communicate and open for that. So for me, um, recently, in recent years, I've been learning how to communicate with people, so that's actually improved friendships a lot. And uh, actually, um, uh, be more understanding when something happens, and uh, and eat crow when I have to, and make amends and say I'm sorry meaningfully uh, when I when I've done wrong. So it's it's uh, helped improve my relationships a lot, and um, and so things are very different. But once you know, once watching the show, I was like, I need friends. Like I really like literally have boxed myself into this tiny little corner, into this tiny little bubble of a life. And I need to reach out and have um, more friends and I guess be more approachable and be kinder to people. So, awesome. Yeah. And uh, seeing as you started off with episode one, and we know that was Nightmare Moon, I'm going to ask you, <laughs> I'm not going to ask you favorite pony. I'm going to ask you favorite villain. 
Oh, a Jesus, you know. N no. Ben is a. He just sucks. He's uh, a donkey's <laughs> behind. The donkey's behind, that's what he is. Who's. What? No. I'm trying to. God, you know. T Rex. Should have prepared for this. The shrooms. T Rex. Discord. Well, I mean, Discord's interesting. What I like, I liked Discord because he's weird. He's like a patchwork of a person. Um, but also the voice actor is awesome. Yes, John, uh, John great. And I was like, I was like, how do I know that voice? <laughs> and that's when the other side of me came out, and I was like, oh my god, <laughs> Star Trek: The Next Generation. <laughs> And I was like, oh, Star Trek The Next Generation is available to binge watch on Netflix. Doing that now. <laughs> if you haven't met John yet, he's awesome. I have not. Oh, no. he is awesome. He's got the coolest voice. Yes. Like, I mean, I, I go off of the voice actors. I, like, villain wise, I would say, I mean, Discord's cool. He's cool. And he became, like, almost a lovable character. Almost a good was, guy. Yeah, everybody's, like, into this character. They kept bringing him back. Clearly, I wasn't cool enough. They haven't brought me back. <laughs> Um, have they brought Sven Gallup back? Because nope. that's not okay. Nope. Uh, <laughs> Nobody from that episode's come back. Yeah. It's no. like we need we need to petition Hasbro for a new we need to, like we need Pony Stock. We need Countess Color Churro. <laughs> we need all the other pop stars. I mean there's at least five now. Yeah, right. Yeah, so we need we need a pony stock. We we need, need. Yeah, pony stock. Yeah. Totally. Yeah, we need like, a pony stock. Money for so this is the point in this interview when <laughs> you out there can very slowly line up behind that microphone. And I want kids in front. Anybody who's under 15 gets to choose <laughs> first. So if you guys want to ask a question, Lena, very calmly, easy. Yeah, I'll respect it. It's very good. very good. It's very orderly. So, very orderly. I, Any younglings in the front? You know what's really interesting to me? I don't know how you guys feel, felt about this episode. The socialist stuff, or the communist stuff? Oh, yes. Or oh, like Remember this? The communist episode? Yes, Starlight Moon. That's Starlight Moon. Yeah. Okay, I kind of liked her. She was yeah. like, yeah. you guys, she was like, you guys can live and be all equals while I get to have all of everything and all the fabulousness. And I was like, I was like, is this a total direct, like, lesson in communism? <laughs> like, that's incredible for like a children's show. <laughs> I, I talked to Daniel Ingram and, and the marching thing, the marching song. Yeah. He said he was creeped out. Yeah, he, did, yeah. he did all of the he did all of the research to do the song. He said, I don't ever want to do that again. It was crazy. I was like, yeah. I was like, this is a really uh, deep I uh, like yeah. this is a There's a lot of deep things in my little pony. Yeah, yeah. But that was that to me was like the the edgiest episode because it was dealing with communism. Yeah. Like, All right. honestly. <laughs> First up, come on up to the front. Write the question. You don't have to write, write the, the question. question, just ask it. Oh. Oh, oh you want to okay. screen the question? <laughs> okay. In all the seasons, who's your like favorite pony or something? <laughs> who's my favorite Who pony? Who is your favorite yeah. pony? Yeah. Yeah, clearly. <laughs> Um, you know, P uh, Pinkie Pie, she's easy to love. Yes. You know, everyone, and when people were like, who, who would you be as a pony? And I was like, and everyone made me, uh, everyone was like, you would be, um, why am I blanking on everything? This is terrible. No. You'd be Rainbow Dash, obviously. I was like, no, not obviously. I'm not Rainbow Dash. I'm like, so far from Rainbow Dash. I'm like a Pinkie Pie. Hello. Party, party. Yeah. Friendly. <laughs> Party, party I'm cannons. She, she's probably the best because she gets to like. What's the one? There was the episode where they were throwing. Was it a season finale? It might have been. There was an episode where they were in the castle and she was throwing a party and she was blowing the cannons and it was like the wrong timing. Oh yeah, because they hit the cannons everywhere where they they go off. Yeah, yeah. I love, I love her for that. She's just fun. Because she's just like a loose cannon. Go for it. Next. You had a really cute ans uh, answer to the what would like a Cutie Mark Crusader rah rah episode look like. So I thought, uh, what would a fun pony stock episode look like that, that featured you? What would the plot or the twist be? Oh, the pony stock one? The pony yeah. stock one? Mm. Maybe uh, 
Pinkie Pie is trying to throw another huge show and she gets all the pop rock stars of the, the Equestria to come in and Sven Gallup having been shunned in the last episode <laughs> now trying to trying to uh, get the backside, an Ocean's Eleven kind of thing where he gets, he gets yeah. All, uh, yeah, no, he gets the Beastie Boys, right, in, in a car, you know, and Sven Gallup hires the Beastie Boys to come in and, and sabotage the whole thing. So like a huge rock. Video. I thought you were going with a uh, redemption for Sven. No. <laughs> no, Sven Gallup does not deserve the redemption. You know, I would love to see that. I would love to see uh, a version of the Beastie Boys, like this, like, punk rock rap yes. pony group that goes around and is like, that's the Sabotage video. I don't know if you know the Sabotage video, but that would be sick. That would be sick. <laughs> Thank you very much. Next, Thank you. next please. Um, would you like to see a Broadway musical of MLP? And who would you star as the main six? <gasps> oh, dang. Um, I think it would be interesting to see it, uh, trying try to be done live. It would be hard because you, you lose one of the main elements that is actually one of the main attractions of... <laughs> main attraction. Of, um, of, uh, yeah, of the show, which is the animation. To me, the animation is like one of the main elements of the show that makes it so special. Uh, storyline and music and the characterizations are awesome so um and it'd also be hard for me to to uh take away the voice from the character so if you had broadway people playing these ponies um the main six it would feel strange because we're so used to their voices we're so used to the original voices that we'd be taken out of it you know almost, so you'd almost have to make up your own like a new Thing that takes place like they did with the movie even though they had the main six they had like the sea place and they had all these new different characters coming in because um, well I mean they had to make a movie but also like they wanted to include all these celebrities and the celebrities couldn't voice existing characters so they had to make up brand new characters to have the celebrity appeal of the movie although I think Personally, they didn't need any celebrities to drive that movie, um, but they did. Anyway, of course, that's what you do in animation now. Um, but uh, if I had to cast the main six, uh, I would do Leslie Odom Jr. as, um, probably as Rarity. Lin-Manuel Miranda, see, no, they're all yes. there. Yes! <laughs> As uh, uh, as Pinkie Pie, because he's super bubbly like that. No, he is. He is myself um, as Countess Coloratura, because it would be based on Coloratura's life. It would be her life story. Let's just be honest. Um, and then everybody else would just kind of make a slight appearance. Um, okay. Maybe I would do Audrey McDonald, but she would have to be. She would be one of the the queens. She would be. Um, What's her name? Queen Chrysalis? No, the, um... Celestia. No, I'm the main... the sun. Celestia. Celestia, yeah, yeah thank you, Celestia. Yeah. The sun. Jesus Christ, I'm terrible. Would be like Audra McDonald, and then Luna would be... Oh, I don't know. Uh, yeah. We'd go through names. Of, we could go through names. Yeah, it would go forever. Ashley Ball would play either or, because she can sing, so she can be on stage. She yeah, she it would just be own, She could do her own ponies. Yeah, exactly. She'd, She'd be backstage changing. <laughs> Costumes every two seconds. Yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Celestia, Jesus. Hi. I just want to say it's an honor to finally meet you in person, and I thank you for the support you gave on the videos I did of your episode. Oh, thank you. All right, so my question is probably one you get a lot at conventions like this, and we'll try to be the one to ask this. <laughs> um, what tips do you have on acting for theater as well as voice acting that you could pass on to uh, rookies? Oh, um, hmm. Acting for theater, it's all, it's all the same. It needs to come from a place of, of reality. So when you listen to someone speak, there's like a certain tam, there's a certain, um, uh, there's a certain quality when we speak, the way we pronounce words, the way we say sentences all the way through. I mean, it's, uh, 
So to be a good actor, you need to kind of copy the way people speak naturally and, and see, see something written and then be like, all right, how would this be spoken naturally and, and sound like real, like I'm saying it off the cuff. So a lot of times you have to like, um, it has to come from a place of, of truth. So if I was gonna say this sentence, um, uh, how would I say it myself? So then you change the words and you say, all right, well, I'm telling this person, you know, you're, uh, every pony needs to go and leave this room or whatever, I don't know. Every pony needs to get out now, right? Okay, so I wouldn't say every pony because I'm not an actual pony in my life. How would I tell people to evacuate a space really fast? I'd be like, get out, right? <laughs> That's the way I would say that line, right? So I'd be like, everybody get out! Like, everybody get out! You know, so, so it's just like taking something in a reaction of how you would normally do it and seeing how it's written in that character and then putting your own, that own, your own, like, emotion to that line reading because that is what will make it sound real. Okay, so I guess the same thing can be applied for voice acting as well? Everything, yeah. Sorry, it's, all, it's all the same, you know? When you're voice acting and when you're acting, acting, voice acting is a much more... Um, yeah, it's crazier. It's bigger because you're you you you're trying to. You're, it's a it's a cartoon character, right. and cartoon characters are just out of this world nuts. Right. If you were to act like Robert De Niro or something as Pony, it would be kind of boring. They yeah. need to do something extreme. The, the yeah, a little thing, more extreme. The hardest thing to do as a voice actor in a booth is to do an emotional scene because you don't have anything this to work with, you just have this. So it's the tremor yeah. of the voice, it's how yeah. the line's delivered. But you're obviously doing this in the booth, trying to be really small or something like that, and it comes out in your performance. Right. And I had to do that in something, I was like, how the hell am I gonna do this? And, <laughs> and I actually had to call up Vincent Tom, and say, dude, how do I do that? <laughs> it was, uh, All right. Yeah. Well, I say thank you so much. Thank you. Yes, you have seen. Um, just to ask, so you said that you pretty much became a fan of the show like everyone else stuck from the beginning, but at what point did you find out that the majority of the fan base was this? <laughs> did, you did you just keep the double take and go, wait, what? I have several questions. Yeah, right? Um, no, you know what? When did, when did the, when did the, um, the movie come out, the Bronies documentary. I was in that one. Um, was it six years ago? Yeah, okay, so yeah, so wow. it was on Netflix at the same time as I was binge watching this. So it probably came up, I was like, what's this? And I watched it and I was like, this is so interesting. It's, it's, it's just like an interesting phenomenon that you could have never planned, you know? And I was like, I guess I'm a Pegasister, like, which is, not as, I, it's cool, but it's not as interesting as a pony, is it? Let's just be real, girls. Let's just be real. Pink and ponies, you know, I've always dreamed of pink and ponies and, um, and fabulous things that these girls go through. And it's also cool because the show is a female empowerment show. Your six main characters, the main six, are women going through hard times and coming together and defeating men. I mean, it's really funny. So, of course women are gonna love this show. Keg sisters all the way, you know? You're like, yeah, girl power. Um, but, but, but the brony aspect of it, the man the man aspect of it is, is much more interesting. I just found out there's a cider fest, which is like a beer oh, festival. Oh, yeah. And, I, and that, you know, that is so interesting to me that, that something like that, you know, stemmed from this thing that was, you know, essentially built for children. But, I mean, now it has this broad, much broader reach and a, and a much bigger fan base, so. It was surprising, but I was like, not that surprising, because it's a, it's a fun show, and and my boyfriend at the time was watching it with me, and while he will not admit that he was a fan, <laughs> he was absolutely a fan, and he loved Pinkie Pie. He loved Pinkie Pie. He was a partier, and he loved Pinkie Pie. He absolutely loved the show. So, you know, to me, it wasn't weird. If it's good, it's good. Yeah. And just as a quick secondary question, I should have put down on paper, but oh well. Um, seeing as you sung on Broadway, um, what would you kind of recommend for someone who wants to really strengthen their voice in any way? Oh, I would say uh, don't limit yourself and um, don't, uh, if it doesn't hurt, then it's just weak and you can, you can use that, you can strengthen your 
voice like a muscle. So um, instead of just working one part of your voice out, you want to find all these different areas of your voice. That's what makes a good voice actor, actually, is that they are able to access all these other little tiny voices that um, maybe were weak at first, but then they like kept using it, and then it got better and better and better, and they're able to do these crazy things with their voice. And it's just about bravery and not being afraid to fail, because failure is essential to growth, and because um, you'll never get anywhere unless you fail. It's true. And, uh, and uh, just, just being okay with sounding bad. Like, what? There's nothing on the screen. Right, yeah. Yeah, it's just, you, you, you can do it, it's just you need to take the time to trust yourself and, and allow yourself to fail and that's okay. You know, that's the, I think that's every, that's most people's biggest fear. And don't be afraid to sound like this. Yeah, exactly, yeah. It, yes. Yeah. Really, yeah. Long, but yeah. Yeah, and don't be afraid to be laughed at. It's that's it's all in good fun, and it should just be. Enjoyable. If you're in cartoons, you're supposed to be laughed at. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. If you can make the voice director laugh, you're doing your job. Exactly. Yeah. Eva, thank you so much. Thank you. So, Lena. Hi. Um, so my question is, well, like I'm a person who loves entertainment. I like I try to put stuff out there. I like acting, love singing too. Um, I just want to know is from your perspective. Uh, how cutthroat is like the entertainment industry, or in your case, the Broadway industry? How what? How cutthroat is the entertainment or Broadway industry? Oh, it's uh, the entertainment industry in general. If you want to be a performer, it's extremely difficult. Mm -hmm. You, it, it's um, the, the the success rate is so minuscule uh, that it would blow your mind that anyone would even want to continue to do it. Uh, but what I found that's really interesting is that a lot of people stop doing it right before they could have maybe got their break. So wow. I like to think of it as like, um, if you really love it and you fight through all this stuff and you can deal with the craziness that is this business and the mind games and all, all the stuff, um, it's like you're a seed, right? And you can't see a seed underneath the ground. You can't see it growing. You can't see it. The only time you ever see it is when it pops through the earth, right? right? And a lot of people stop watering that seed right before it pops through the earth. So what you want to do is you want to just keep going for your dream uh, in any way that you can and fulfill your creativity yourself, you know, the other things will come. Uh, and do your best to live your best life while you're pursuing this one big dream and never give up because around the corner, one day, it could just pop through. That's a great metaphor, and I, I love the advice. Thank you so much, Lena. Thank you. <laughs> Hi. Sorry about that. It's okay. Anyways, so, anyway, so first, just first impression, absolutely love the song, Once, but just imagine inside, it's one of my most favorites in the entire show. Anyway, the question, um, how awesome would it be if you found out one day that you'd be doing an episode or another movie of some sort where at one point in it you would actually be doing somewhat of a collab song with Songbird Serenade, if you know who she is? Oh, I would be stoked because that would mean I would be back on the show. <laughs> <laughs> I love doing voiceover, I love singing, I love it, I love it. So it would be just like drugs, you know. This is like the greatest kind of fun thing in the world. I was say, I've, I've done like, I had to do like demos. I think I did an original demo that was offered as the um, theme song for My Little Pony Friendship is Magic. Uh, because it was before the show was out, it was, long, it was a long time ago, and it was My Little Pony. I was like, why are they redoing the My Little Pony theme song? And so I went in and um, he was like, can you sound like a little child? You know, pure and sweet and light. And I was like, yeah, I can. And so, <laughs> and so I was doing it and he was like, can you sound happier and happier and happier? And I was like, yes, I can, I can. And by the end of the recording session, which was about not even an hour long, it must have been half an hour of me like smiling and singing like a child, I went out there and I was floating through Manhattan. You know, I must have looked insane, but I was like, hi, everyone, I'm so happy. Hello, hi. <laughs> like, so happy. So 
that's why doing voiceover is so much fun. It's because it puts you in this like other dimension of, of emotional like response just because you have to convey that emotion to in your voice and it and by doing that it just affects your entire body and it just gives you like a body high almost. Yeah, it's like amazing. <laughs> but then on a funny little punchline, um I could be wrong, but when I saw MLP the movie, I think I might have seen your Countess Coloratura character in the background somewhere as a voiceless cameo. Just saying, thank you. Yeah. <laughs> I think so too. I was really upset. No. <laughs> Uh, it's really, really great to meet you. Hi. I love the main attraction. It is my favorite Applejack episode. And <laughs> uh, one of my favorite episodes of season five. But um, I, my question is, and if you can see my shirt, uh, have you ever recorded or given thought to recording your own version of a Def Leppard song? <laughs> that would be awesome. I'm, um, maybe, maybe possibly. not. Pour, maybe not pour some sugar on. Right, it. I was about I, to I say. Think, oh, I think you can nail photograph. Is Def Leppard stopped after Pyromania? <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> sir, you are wrong, sir. Hysteria Dude, is on the best through the album. night was the best album. Ooh, ooh. I'm old. <laughs> yeah, right. That I don't know, but I will tell you uh, that I have danced on bars to that song. <laughs> Next week, we got 10 minutes left, so line. make them quick, and we're gonna get through everybody, I'm okay? Nobody else in line, we got 10 minutes. I don't have any plenty of Broadway actors who lend their voice uh, in order to cartoons, like, um, uh, for, for, forgive me if I mispronounce her name, uh, Bernadette Peters, who yeah. voiced uh, Rita the Cat on A and Maniacs, and recently, Lynn Manuel Miranda got a voice as a Gizmo Talk on uh, DuckTales. Now, it's not really the question more like, um, help me figure this out. There seems to be this, this stark vocal uh, contrast uh, between uh, voice actors and Broadway actors. It's one of those things where I can't pinpoint what the difference is, uh, but I know that there's a difference. Uh, okay, so <laughs> what would you say is, is the main difference between a, a, a Broadway actor doing voiceover compared to a voice actor? Um. I, I would say just like, voice actors are amazing because they're able to, I don't know, I haven't figured it out yet. I thought, I was like, I'd be a great voice actor, right? I'd be a great cartoon actor, I could do anything. And then I realized that it is such a skill because they're very used to um, manipulating their voices to sound extreme. They do extreme characters because that's what you need, again, for a cartoon. You need an extreme sounding voice for for it to come off as like a really, I don't know, 2D character. Um, as opposed to stage, you're human, you know, so you're being a person. Um, cartoons are usually, I don't know, you could be a sponge or you could be a pony or you could be, you know, anything. Uh, you could be fries, you could be a milkshake, you could be anything. And, um, you be, and yeah, you can be anything, uh, and, and your voice needs to reflect what that character is, which is hard, because that's something that's totally unimagined and like needs to be something that's totally unique in and of itself. As opposed to Broadway performer, we're telling stories of humans, essentially, and, uh, and we can be this, we can be ourselves. More. Weren't you in the production of Cats? Oh, well, yeah. <laughs> We or, well, that's totally sung through. I did cats, I did play a cat, but it wasn't like we were cat cats, you know, we were people in cat costumes telling a story that's not really a real, like, there's not really a story, we're just talking about cats and singing about them, and it's complicated, but that's very different. It's, it's a sung through show, you know, no one has a monologue or dialogue there, so it's also very different. Um, so yeah, I would say maybe Spongebob on Broadway, that, that was closer to voice acting than uh, than what typically is done on Broadway. Um, but usually it's some, uh, you get to see the human character on stage in front of you and it's, it's I guess, more relatable so it doesn't have to be as an extreme uh, voice. But when it's a cartoon of a piece of meat speaking and being crazy, it's gotta be something very unique. All right, thank you for your time. <laughs> Uh, hello, Lena. Hi. First of all, 
I really enjoy the song. It's good work on that. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> and my question is, if uh, if Kala Ochoa released her own album in Equestria, and Daniel Ingram and Hasbro asked you to record that, would you want to do that? Yes. Yeah. We've already talked about it. I was like, Yo, really? Daniel, we need to do an album. Yeah. It's like, why I not? I love that. I can see now obsessed with awesome. Kala Ochoa. Yeah. Exactly. It's just like. Come to, like the Countess comes out with like, it w I guess it would have to be more along the, the lines of like an Adele album because that's kind of where she ended up at the end of the episode was yeah. more like an Adele. So it'd be kind of like that. Yeah, I'd love to see an album. Oh, same. I'll talk to Daniel. Thank you. No problem. <laughs> happy when you saw Countess Culture on the, the show and you finally saw what she looked like. How did you feel when you found out there were toys of her? They what? There was like merchandise of Rara. I freaked out. Like, so, so, again, like, it's another surreal thing. You're like, oh my god, it's me as a pony and it's a thing people can buy and it's plastic and uh, it's everywhere. So when Hasbro came out with the toy, I was like, that looks nothing like, um, Color. Like, it was like a green thing, and I was like, well, that's kind of... A... The thing that blew my mind was I um, play the game on my phone. <laughs> and do you guys know what I'm talking yeah. about? Yes. So I, I play the game on my phone. I'm going to show him so he knows that I have it. The My Little Pony game. The game, game Loft, yeah. Game. My Little Pony. Yep. It's going to load. Um, it's been a while. But when I saw my character as the face on my app, I was like, oh my god, it's me! I'm an app! This is so cool, I'm an app! And I had just started, it's really funny, as I had just started dating my current boyfriend um, at the time, and he, he was like Googling me, and he found, uh, he found the color tourist stuff on YouTube, and he was like, is this you? And I was like, I was like, yes, and guess what? I'm an app! And so, <laughs> he was like, really? I was like, how cool is that? And so he downloaded the game. Never played it, but he downloaded it and showed me, of course. She's also made it into the uh, card game. Yeah. What? The CT card game. There are a couple raw cards. Really? Yes. I didn't know that either. I'm not That's sure what they so do, cool. the game. I know they're there. Yeah, I love walking around and seeing like, oh my god, look, it's, it's me, you know, or it's my cutie mark. Someone was walking around with my cutie mark all over their dress. Uh, and I was standing right there looking at them, and I was like, hey. And they were just like, like, hey, you know? And I was like, <laughs> okay, so that's my cutie mark, <laughs> whatever. Uh, <laughs> I just think it's totally cool, and it was fun to be, it's cool because to be a fan of the show and then to be a part of the show, it's just like, I think it's a better experience than someone who was just cast in the show. Thank you. Yeah. Next, please. Hello, hello. Lena, thank you for being here. Yeah. I just want to say, uh, in all my years of coming to these, uh, one thing I've noticed about uh, meeting my heroes and meeting uh, all the awesome voice actors is that I sometimes lose the ability to speak on account of <laughs> it's nerve-wracking sometimes. And I was just curious, uh, in your career, or in your life in general, have you had moments where uh, you've been really starstruck that you could share with us? Um, I don't really get starstruck. Uh, not because I don't think they're amazing, um, but because, uh, I don't know, I just, I feel like, I'm like, you're, you're, a per you're a person. Usually I'm just like, you're, you're, you're a person. That's what scares but me. I have been scared, uh, I have been scared. And it was Cindy Lauper scared the crap out of me. Uh, so, Cindy Lauper scared the crap out of me. Yeah, anyway. I, I love her, she's awesome. She's very, like, blunt. And, um, and I, I booked Kinky Boots, but I booked it with a self-tape, so I actually didn't go in the room for her. I was booked off a video, because I was out of town doing a different show. And when I went to my first rehearsal, um, I'd never met her, and I got nervous, because I listened to a lot of Cindy Lauper. You know, it was one of the ways I figured out how to sing, was singing along to Cindy. So I was like, oh my god, I'm going to meet Cindy Lauper. That's crazy, right? Um, how cool. And I met her, and I was like, <laughs> it was after rehearsal, and I was like, I was like, hi, it's it's really nice to meet you. And she was like, who are you? <laughs> I was like, I'm Selena. And she's like, well, who do you play? She's like, oh, I, I play I play Nicola. She's like, oh, Nicola. 
you should listen to my demo because the way I do the song, it's the way you should do the song. So listen to the way I, you know, it's all about the rhythm. And I was like, okay, well, okay, it's nice to meet you, bye. <laughs> and then later I would have conversations with her and she was just, I mean, you know, she's telling me about her psoriasis. And, you know, she's, and, and you're like, um, you know, I was like, I'm just commenting on your scarf. You don't have to tell me about the psoriasis taking over your head and making you bald. Um, so it's interesting. Sometimes when you meet um, someone that you've idolized or looked up to or have wanted to meet for a long time, they surprise you because they're very different <laughs> than what you would think. And, uh, and, it, and it's, it just, it humanizes everybody. You know, everybody's just, just a person. You know, there was never had a, a bad moment. And with one of that, guys, we're done. Okay. We're out of time. <laughs> so, sorry, sorry, guys. But, and just remember, everybody out there is just a person. Her, me, everybody over there. We're just a pony. We're just a pony. I'm just a pony. I'm just a pony. <laughs> yeah. Thank you all for coming. We'll see you out there.